Hey, welcome back. I'm Fina, and today I'm going to be doing a sketch for a commission painting that I'm doing. And as you can see, I've already primed, sanded, and done a sort of undercoat of pink for the painting. So now I'm just going to draw my composition straight onto that. And I thought you could join me. <laughs> so. The commission, I've been given a couple of different sort of inspiration photos, and I'm just going to try and make something of those on here. But the main sort of concept is it's a photo of a particular beach, and the client wanted beach huts because they had one, they want specifically their beach hut, and the rest of them on there and the like scenery of the beach, and then a couple um, of the family members, like with a boat <laughs> at the front. So that's what I'm putting together. So I have a photo of the beach and of some of the different old photos of the family and of the beach hut, and now I just need to get it all into one. <laughs> As you can see, it's quite big. So I'm going to start off using just a mechanical pencil and try and sort of just map out where the big areas are going to be. So the horizon line is going to be somewhere. I think I want it maybe roughly two thirds up, maybe not quite that high, but I think I want it to be somewhere there. Let's say Roughly there is my horizon line. <laughs> and then the beach hearts. I'm gonna have them big at the front, so it's close by, going smaller towards the horizon. So I reckon let's do sort of again the middle third. And I'm just gonna draw out the sort of rough shape of the beach hut. Figuring out the perspective. Maybe we should do the perspective lines first. <laughs> okay, so we'll go from the top of the beach huts to our horizon line. Okay, one perspective line. And then the bottom of the beach hats has to meet this line. Like that. Does that look right? Or should it be thicker here? Hmm. I think potentially it could. So in front of the beach huts there's a bit of like foliage and there are stairs coming down, so I'm going to need another line for that. There seems to be a sort of a sandy path on the beach that I think I'm going to have going from here, around there. We sort of lose sight of that path at the corner line here. It seems to be roughly the sort of thing. Mm. 
need to try and remember the I mean, sort of like comparative size of like the path being that big and then the beach up being that big it needs to be roughly the same the whole way down so the path is just a bit wider than the sort of height of the beach up I've got at the moment so I've got to like try and maintain that At this point, on the horizon line, everything sort of squishes in together, so I'm not going to make that too distinctive. And then, it looks like this sort of a little bit of greenery, and then just the beach, and then the water. And I would like to have the sea in it at least a bit, so how about we put that on next? It's going to curve around like this, the same as the beach. So then all this is, is beach. Maybe the water could come a bit further in actually. Like that. Okay. Then I'm gonna have a little family on the beach here. But I'll get to them in a moment. <laughs> Trying to sort out sort of the rest of it first. So, let's get started on our beach hunt. So, in keeping with this perspective, I need to do it like this. At the bottom of it, the grass kind of takes over, so there's going to be sort of foliage here. And in the centre is the, maybe it's not in the centre, stairs sort of um, coming down from there. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. I think I want to shorten the height of it. Staircase goes like this. And that's shrubbery around here. Near the door. Hello, Ruth. I don't know how to do that roof, really. Not yet, so I'll leave it for a moment. <laughs> Okay, 
So let's continue with the hot style line. They are kind of close to each other like this. I think the problem is that I need them to come back thinner as I'm seeing them more side on. I'm also need to follow this line. Yeah, that feels better. small at this point. They do go the whole way around though it seems. I'm just gonna start doing little lines like this. I think our roof goes like that here. And what do the roofs look like? Seems like the sort of like tile. Okay. So let's work a bit on the beach. So on my photo of the beach, there are some boats sort of sitting here, but the client gave me a little sort of photoshopped idea of what he wanted, and it's not there, the boats. I don't know whether to include them or not. Maybe I'll do just like one or two. Maybe not. I don't know. I'll do a couple. I'll do like some lying around, I think. but I think I might do them in the distance. So, I'm going for like a sailboat type thing. There's a little boat. <laughs> um, so then my sandy path there's a couple of sort of greenery bits covering it. Just keeping the edge of that. So 
right, I'm gonna make that a little bit of greenery. Along there. And my sky up here. I want some clouds, but not loads. <laughs> so I'm gonna have maybe just a couple of um, lines of cloud, I think, coming out. Maybe copying that curve. And I think I want a couple boats out on the water as well. Let's just do one really far away. Okay. Is that too big? Yeah, that's way too big for over there, actually. Remembering my perspective, that it's going to be actually super far away. So let's make it a tiny little one there. This is one of the water. I think when it gets to maybe here, we can start to have the sort of wave slapping. So, most important part really, here, they want the family with a boat and a dog. So, I have a picture of the boat, roughly, and I'm going to have one of the kids pushing the boat out, so, the boat, it's one of those. front and a flat end and it's got one of those sort of things at the bottom except this isn't the exact boat they had and they mentioned the boat would have also had an outboard motor I don't know what that looks like so I'm going to find a picture to use as a reference okay I'm trying to find a boat that looks similar to this one which also has an outboard motor it looks pretty big like that big if it is the same as this one that I'm looking at So it seems to roughly have like a big part at the top, like that, that then attaches to the back of the boat. Like there's sort of a clamp on the back of the boat, and then something goes down into the water, and then that sort of boxy outside part. So I hope that's what it looks like. I'll be sending over a photo of a sort of basic um, early stage sketch painting of this for the client to approve. So if anything is really totally wrong at that point, I'm sure they'll let me know. So time for the family. Okay, our first child set in the boat, I think. So let's stick him in there, shall we? There would be a bench, I guess, in the boat, sort of going like this. And we'll sit him on there. And then don't, I'm not going to do it super detailed because I'm not going to paint it super detailed. So. Let's just try and think of the relative size of a child inside a boat. Here's his little head. 
I put him in? I've got a photo of him, so I think I'm going to try and just do similar clothes to what I'm seeing here. So like some shorts, socks, and a sweater. What posture would a kid have sitting in a boat? Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not entirely sure how big a boat is in comparison to a person. I fear I've made him too big. <laughs> anyway, let's just continue on for the time being. I'll shrink him in a minute if necessary. So I'm gonna have all this lights up. A little shorts on. Okay, it's very vague, but it's the shape of a person. That's all I need for now. Okay, so we're moving on to the second kit. This one is pushing out the boat. So, can I have him? I guess sort of hunched over. I don't really want to block out the Mona totally, but actually it might be helpful to have him covered a little bit since I don't really know exactly how the specific one looked. But let's have his hair. Okay, start with his arms. Arms. Here. Were they put on either side of the motor? I can only assume they would. So one arm's there, one arm's here. His body would have to come here. Now this child is a bit older than this one, so he should be a bit bigger. And let's see. I don't know. I don't have a picture of this this one, so I don't really know what clothes to put him in. So I guess I'm going to do something similar to the other kid. Give him a t-shirt or a sweater and some shorts. And I'm just going to assume he's not wearing any shoes or socks since he's on the beach. So... Shorts, one leg, back. This is too angular. Foot. The other leg is going to be forward, pushing. Shorts. Leg. So then, yeah, we've got an arm and a hand. The other arm and hand is hidden. The head I have a bit down because he's pushing. And also because I don't know what his face looks like, so I don't want to paint him. Let's say his head is here. Okay, now we have two kids. There is one more kid, and she's sitting on the beach. I do have a photo of her. In the request, they've said. Uh, boys often took a boat out around the bay, she would stay behind, and in the sort of 
a Photoshop job that I've got. She's sat facing this way. I'm much sure facing that way, just so she can be looking out over the sea and her siblings. And I have an outfit for her, but I don't know if it's beach appropriate. She's wearing a little sort of a dress with a sweater over the top and some roller socks. Maybe I'll do... I'll do a little dress. I won't do the socks. I'll assume she's barefoot sat on the beach. Okay, I've got a little reference picture that I like. So, let's put her here. So, let's say her head is like this. She's got a little bob haircut. Then, do her neck. And I'm having her facing that way, so this is her sort of torso, broad shoulder. And then I'm going to have her sort of with her legs up and her hands on her knees, hands on her lap. So, just her little legs. I'm gonna have that sort of draping on the floor. There. I think I've made her body too short. Anyway, two legs. But her arm is gonna be resting on top. She's kind of facing a bit that way. I think maybe I want her legs to be a bit more up here. So I can show she's sort of facing this way instead of straight up. So there's her shoulder and her head. And then there's also a dog, so let's have our little dog. Where should we put him? In the little picture, mock up, he's sort of standing here. So I'll continue with that. I'll do that. And we've got a picture of his dog. He's cute. I don't know what breed this is. It's sort of like scruffy looking, medium sized. Looks very cute. So let's have him standing. The picture I've got is of the dog sitting and looking to the side. So I'm going to find a reference picture of a dog similar to this one standing up. <laughs> I've had to search ex like specifically for an excited dog posture. <laughs> um, just because I don't want it just to be like stood there. So I found an excited looking dog that looks to be kind of the same proportions. So let's add him in. So he's standing there. His little leg. Dog's got quite a pointy sort of snout. That's his little head. Is that too big? Is that too big for a dog's head? Maybe. I think it's too long. Let's shorten the head a bit. Okay, do 
don't care. It's got floppy ears. And there's a lie. Very cute. And then his body. This one curly and round like that. So the back leg is back because he's moving. Tails up. I might have to ask what kind of dog this is so I can find some better reference photos when she comes to painting it but I don't mind doing a little bit of a rough job now as long as I've got sort of the right shape but like when it comes to painting the tail and I want to make sure that like the tail is the right amount of fluffy and all that I think it will be useful I feel like the reference dog I've picked here, it's not got much of a neck, whereas our dog looks like it has a bit more neck. So maybe I needed to slim that down a bit. Okay, here's our dog. Kids, each, only one bow. Maybe I should put another bow in. I could put some further away boats, maybe like down here. So I've got some boats. And what's going on in the distance? So it looks like, from the photo of this place, there are some bigger buildings sort of in the distance over here. So let's put those in. Oh, I'm running well on pencil lead. Let's switch to my big fat pencil. So it looks like the beach huts stop around here when we start to get bigger buildings with like bigger sides. But I think I can be a little vague with these since they're quite small. So when it comes to actually painting them, I won't really give them much detail. I mean, this picture, there's something that could be a big boat in the middle of here. It could be a little deck. I think it's a big boat, so I'm not going to put it in. And I'm not going to put any other people, I think, on the beach, just the three of them. So, I think that is that for the sketch. That means next up, I'll be doing sort of an underpainting. Okay, I am back and with supplies. So, I've just got some um, dark brown oil paint and a little bit of white spirit. I'm gonna go ahead and get started just doing some underpainting. So this is gonna be super simple and rough. It's essentially like the first sketch of the painting. So let's get in some of those details. I'm gonna start off with I think this shrubbery here. Just because you can like it really helps to sort of just get an idea of what's going on around these empty looking parts of the sketch. So we've got some steps going on. They are surrounded by shops. Grass, and that's a lot. 
running a little bit, but don't worry about that. So a great big bush there. Except for the little places where there are steps in front of all these, the bush, uh, the like grass continues the whole way along, it seems. So let's just mark out some little gaps where there would be staircases, and then down here, it gets so small that it's not that important anymore. And then we can sort of just fill out that middle space. This is our little grassy areas. Okay. And how about we get on that beach hut? So it's darkest right under the roof, but the roof itself is quite dark. So in these super light areas, I'm just going to fill it in with really watered down colour. So we've got these lines down the whole thing. And we'll hand on some dots. And you can sort of see the bottom of the deck there that the plants come over the top of it. So now 
I'm just going to make those plants a little darker so that you can still see them over the side of that. becoming obvious to me now that I don't know how long a bee charm is, which might be important in the future. I don't want them to just blend into each other too much or it will start looking a bit boring but you get the idea Now buildings back here, again, they were super vague, so I'm really not going to go into too much detail with any of that.
coastline. There we have it. So let's get a bit more. I want to get over here because if I stop bending here, then I'm going to lean on it. I just know it. <laughs> so let's do over the side first. Got my little boat in the water and our coastline. So how should it be? I have like the occasional shrubbery here. I have a little boat here, don't I? Put those in there. Oh, it's too dark. The sea obviously is not very dark. And here, it's the edge of the water where it's not deep, so it's sort of just like the water laying on the sand. So it's reflective. I would like to somehow <laughs> demonstrate that, but it's a little difficult to do. Piles of sand on the beach will maybe be a better indicator, because of course once it actually gets to the painting, this will all be colours, so you'll be able to see, oh that's blue, that's the sea, and this is yellow, that's the sand. But this is just, you know, and a little bit of sketch work for that. So I'm not going to do too much to this area, just because it doesn't need it particularly. sideways boat. I feel like we should shade him in a bit. I'm going to shade in the inside. Going around the boy. Got going on here, little sleeves, got his little legs, coloring the shorts. The outside of this boat is white, so I think it's going to be a bit darker around the um, sort of edge of it where the sand has been disturbed. But I am still going to slightly shade the bottom of it. Put 
dock, but there is the motor. And I see that there was another bench in there somewhere. <laughs> that he's also sat on one. Oh, sand paper as well. <clears throat> so, maybe I should have got a smaller brush for this part. dog. <laughs>
could use my imagination a little bit here. Imagine these are <laughs> plants. Anyway. So. This path is sandy. So I kind of want to get into this. You know those sort of like little marks you get in the sand from footprints? Like divots. These divots getting a bit smaller will be a good way to indicate the space. Sounds too big. I see this now, so let me just wipe over those, and we'll get back to that. <laughs> Similar there. Just so we can see it, like, get further away. it to be clear that this is a beach, you know? I know it will be more so with colour, but it's just good to know that if you just look at the shapes you can identify what it is. Okay, well, let's get to some sky. There are some big old clouds going on.
lovely looking skyish. this path. What's happening here? So that leaves us with this space looking the emptiest, I think. Maybe some more sort of just little plants, because it probably fades out a bit more naturally than this. Sort of river, uh, not river bank, like the bank of the edge of the sand and sea. That's what I want here. This is looking a bit messy, but you can imagine how it's going to be. <laughs> so, at least.
have a sort of trail where the boat had come from, you know? Let's make these lines a bit less rigid. for a sketch that's about done. So I'll send this off and see if they like it and if I need to do any changes and then I'm gonna get to actually painting on the colour. So thank you for joining me and come back for the next part. See you later.